welcome on board Ruby Rose 2. After three years of building this boat, we now have the full tour to show you. So come on board and come and see the beautiful boat that we now live on. We're gonna start with the cockpit, then we're gonna move into the saloon and show you all the good stuff inside. But for all of you who wanted to know about the helm station, let's deal with the port side helm, which we are calling our main helm. So let's just start visibility. There's a lot of talk about visibility. We have these electric windows that go up, they go down. And therefore with the forward facing windows open in clement weather when anchoring or mooring, we have a full line of sight. There are some blind spots. I have to move from here to here and I can get my head outside of the combings, but generally not a problem. Another thing to note, we have this glass window up there, which allows us to see the mainsail as it's set. There is a small issue that there is a blind spot which doesn't fully allow us to see the jib. And so we do need to move around the boat for that. And there is also the same thing goes with our colored sails. The screecher can't be seen and we created a small issue for ourselves with that last week, but nonetheless, something we need to learn. So that is the visibility aspect of everything. Let's bring you around here and I will sweep through the controls from port to the center line. We're going to start oh, up here. So we have these forward backward settees. They have a locking pin in here. So when we are at anchor, if we have guests here, these actually form little high bar stalls. Two speed Harken winches. These are obviously electric and the two speed ones, we specified those because to get that big mainsail up, you do need a very, very fast winch. The single speed one just wasn't cutting the mustard. So yeah, so two speed winches um, worked very well with James and Shane on this aspect of everything, having line stowage. So everything is captive in there. The lids of these come off when you're back at anchor or you finished your sailing for the day, everything gets folded and put away there. Underneath here, well, this is just stowage. So we have a very, very big, it's an insulated locker. The other side is our ice machine. Yes, we have an ice machine. And I'm gonna make no excuses for that. Our ice machine is absolutely epic. So um, let us go through the helm station controls. As you can see, let us start Maxwell chain counter. So that is a chain counter for the windlass. A USB socket, the knife I put there, always have a knife at your helm. These are the VC20 electronic throttles. So we have electronic throttles. They're great because if you ever use the dual throttles, the mechanical throttles, they're a bit clunky. There's a bit like kind of like these, very, very smooth. We have another another set on starboard. So you literally just switch between your throttles. So full control from both port and starboard helms. Yanmar uh, engine control, so that shows you whatever statistics you want, whether it's the engine revs or the oil pressure or the temperature. Engine start buttons, and then we've got this full B&G system here. Now this is one of three Zeus 12 inch plotters. Again, all of them run independently. So this one, for instance, if we want to have this one as a plotter and that one as a chart, as a radar, or we can just do whatever else you need to do to kind of like set things up for either racing or for sailing or for night watches. Autopilot control there, and then moving to the very center of the boat, we've just got the light switches for the exterior lights. So the anchor light, the steaming light, deck lights. I'm gonna put the anchor light on because I'm going for a bit soon. Yes, done. Finally, cup holders and the compasses. And essentially everything is mimicked over here. So if I walk you around here, we have just the plotter here, the second control. Again, another electric winch here. These are points, obviously these are harness points here. So these are for safety harnesses. We also have hammock attachment points up here. So there are two hammock attachment points. So if you want to slim a hammock, sling a hammock up, that can all be done. Pretty straightforward. Under here, we have the winch for the davit system. So a single line winch needs a little bit of tweaking. We are all over that. And then under this bench, we have storage, just dinghy equipment or whatever. This bench has nothing because we have the life raft that can be deployed from the stern. Now, there's a lot of questions is, well, can you deploy the life raft with the dinghy in place? No, you clearly can't. Um, so you would have to drop the davits and then drop the life raft. But for us, really important that, that we can just push the whole thing out very, very quickly. The table can be removed and stowed and there is a dedicated stowage bin in the forelocker for this table, should you decide to sail without it. And then moving to the port hand side, we have a barbecue that we've never used because we just eat so much Thai food on the beach. More storage, 
and yeah i think everything that just about completes the cockpit things to appreciate that we haven't talked about the trifold door goes all the way up and then you have this big open in and out space or comes all the way down if you want something slightly more closed off or slightly more secure for us for ventilation it's about 35 degrees celsius at five o'clock in the evening so we have this door open we have the electric windows open we have the safari windows open and we've got a huge amount of airflow here so i'm not perspiring as much as i normally would on the floor we have got this very very comfortable vinyl floor matting marine vinyl floor matting which is actually super lightweight we can wash it down so that is our little cockpit and i want to show you the four decks so take a walk with me so what have we got here firstly so basically all the lines are captive they all run under the deck all labeled here everything comes back to the cockpit apart from the spinnaker halyards we have a very wide deck it's absolutely huge but there's a lot of space here and a lot of functionality that obviously you can see we've got firstly the obvious thing here is we have these two very big sofas these this front facing seating area which we actually use for our morning coffee so we've got that there are flush hatches here we were very specific that we wanted this boat to be built with flush hatches so everything is flush and there are also lovely little non-stick areas that have been bonded to the hatches there so that's a really nice touch the jib track runs across the boat and obviously we have all the lines the the, the spinnaker halyards the jib halyard all running to the mast and then we've got the little princess seats and on port side we have a huge storage locker now that locker is jammed full with our sails but is designed in a way that it does yeah it's got specific hooks and holes for line storage it's got a little miniature trampoline in to get the sails off the floor james did an amazing job in designing that and then moving forward the ground tackle the anchor everything is captive including the the bridle system and the snubber and then so in here we have the anchor windlass so in here there's the windlass there's the tack line actually the the, the the tack line for the spinnaker winch handle and all the controls there and then in here this locker joking aside is bigger than my first boat so inside there there is uh, the the clark pump for the water maker there uh, there is a just a huge huge amount of storage storage keeping weight central really really important and I don't think we will ever fill this up. There's just, it's just too much space. And that locker is accessible from two different hatches. So you can actually go down the fore or the, or the aft hatch. And then in addition to that, under these two seats, there's another two bent, there's another two little, uh, well, another two little two cubby holes where we can store fenders and lines and other bits and bobs. So we have a lot of space just after the trampolines. And then moving forward onto the tramps, what we have, carbon fiber bows for it, which is for the asymmetric, the, bridle system which all comes up here and stows away which actually is a really really nice system and then the the, the screecher the, the screecher furler for when we've got our screecher up and running and then if you look aft you can kind of see what we've got those big safari windows mainsail and then we can take a quick turn up onto the coach roof you can see exactly what's going on up there so we've got 14 huge solar panels on this. I think it's 20, I can't remember how much is it? 2200 watts? 2300 watts of solar on the coach roof. That, in the week that we've been at this anchorage, that's enough to keep this boat fully run. We don't need to run the engine unless we have a very, very power heavy day. Like we're using the washing machine multiple times and using the water maker all day. So this, on a sunny day, it will more than keep up with our battery requirements. The sail bag, because it's a catamaran, it's very easy for us to kind of access the sails. There's no tippy towing around. And James has actually put, yeah, we've even got jack lines on the deck on the top. So if we need to get up here in bad weather, we can be clipped on. Aside from that, I think that's the top of, that's the end of the coach roof discussion, the cabin top discussion, all made of carbon fiber. Very, very light, very, very tough, and very beautiful. Okay, now we are going to go into the saloon galley nav desk area. And I'm gonna start with the galley actually. Follow me around here. So the galley is a U-shaped galley. As you can see, we've got loads of workspace, uh, bench top space. We have these two double sinks. And one of the things that we really liked about this galley was that we have a chute that goes directly to the sea. So when we are offshore and we've got like tea bags or something, then we can just chuck them straight into the chute and away they go. 
Uh, we've got this really nice little tap. We've got a little faucet just for drinking water. There's a charcoal filter on that one so we can drink the water out of there. I think the water out of all the taps is fine, but it tastes a little bit better out of there. In the corner here, we've got these two little shelves. So we just store some cups and mugs and things on there. Uh, we've got all of our coffee and tea making paraphernalia over here. Behind me, we have our hob. Now the hob is a bit of a strange one, to be honest. We've got an induction hob on one side and we've got two gas hobs on the other side. Obviously, this just gives us some options. So if we are running really low on power, then we can use gas. If we are running really low on gas, we can use the induction hob. So it just kind of covers all bases. We do have gas on the boat because our barbecue is a gas barbecue. So that's not just for the stove, that's for the barbecue as well. We also have a couple of nifty little cupboards. So there's not any space in here, as you can see, but um, the guys at Sea Wind turned it into like a spice rack. The only thing that they didn't realize is that it's actually too narrow for spices. So we've had to have a little rethink of how to use that space, but I appreciate the thought. And there's also this shelving area here. This is, as you may recall, a little different from um, hull one. So they um, have this space available in the hull. So they don't really have this deep um, cupboard here. That space is used in the hull. You might recall that. In we have the space in the galley. I personally think that's a better use of space. Uh, we've got a deep um, drawer here. So this is for our pots and pans and things. Um, and we've also got a really nice uh, Miele uh, oven microwave combo. And um, we love this. It works super well. It's really beautiful. It's very clean. We haven't used it that often. <laughs> My understanding is that this was the last one that was available and now I have moved over to Bosch, I think. We've also got quite a bit of uh, cold storage. So this is our refrigerator. Um, it's very exciting having a fridge that is like an actual little bar fridge or a mini fridge. We had a top down fridge on Ruby Rose. That was a massive pain. Now we have a fridge and we have two massive chest freezers. So I just can't believe how much freezer space we've got. We managed to actually fill that one. I'm impressed about that. Uh, but we've also got this one down here. <laughs> Some frozen prawns. Let's move on to the nav station now. So this is our nav station, and this was an area that was really important to us, just like the home positions were. We really wanted a nav desk that we could sit at, keep watch at, have all of our instrumentation here, have a good visibility from here, have a comfortable chair. This was crucial to us, to be honest. Um, so as you can see, we do have that chair. It uh, doesn't quite work for someone of my stature. I can see over the top, but I think uh, in a watch situation, this does not give me visibility that is, is as good as the helm stations. So I would have to be prepared to stand up and walk around the boat a little bit to keep a good, decent watch. But that's okay, that's fine. We have a cubby here. So we've got all of our bits and pieces in there. We've got a really nice little drawer in here. So we've got plenty of storage. And Kevin did a really beautiful job uh, with the nav desk because he made the veneer out of a bird's eye maple uh, wood. So it's really, really lovely. It's got beautiful grain through it. It makes it, I think, quite special. Um, I really love it. Nick really loves it. So we're eternally grateful to Kevin for doing that for us. And we also have uh, all the instrumentation here that we have at the helm station. Uh, well, most of it anyway. We have our chart plotter here. We have the autopilot. Um, we have the VHF radio. We don't have a VHF radio at the helm. That was a slight oversight on our part. Um, here we have Sea Zone. I think we're going to go through this um, separately because it's there's a lot to go through here, and I think it's outside the scope of this tour. But this is where our Sea Zone lives. Our water maker is there, and then on this panel here, if you wanted to come around behind this frosted glass is the AC circuit breakers. Ta-da! Ta-da! There they are. <laughs> Other things to point out while well, I've got my finger of pointing. <laughs> my finger of pointing on air conditioning ducts. So that's one of the air conditioning ducts on the starboard side. What else have I got? Teresa. Uh, gas alarms, very important. There's blinds in here, these blinds. We still are waiting for two to be delivered. So there's a, these are, we have a full set of blinds. Do you want to show people? Yeah, the I'll blinds? demonstrate the blinds. I think people have missed your finger pointing. My finger pointing. It's, uh, it was last seen during the build videos. Yeah, my finger pointing. There you go. So that blind, I mean, we don't have them down now because we're trying to do the video, but they're like super handy. Um, very beautiful. And when they're all down, they look really nice. Yeah. 
Let's move over to the saloon. So this is our big table and it does move around so that you can have a different configuration um, depending on what you want to use the table for. So we kind of have settled with it in this position. We find that that's the most useful. This is obviously my workstation at the moment, but this is kind of where it lives most of the time. We can also lower the table down and turn it into a day bed. The saloon table is also um, done in the same bird's eye maple veneer as the nav desk, which is really nice. So there's some kind of, you know, consistency there. What else? We have this cupboard behind us, which is super, super handy. And that is currently home to all of our electronical things. It's our electronical cupboard. <laughs> and it is a hot mess right now. Nick has his um, PlayStation. We've got all of our cameras. We've got our camera charger, charger gear, charging gear. There's ventilation. We've got GPOs. So we can literally just, this is like our charging station. So if you watch this video and you want to rob the boat, you know exactly where all of that is. This is where we keep our very expensive camera gear. Other things, Nick has obviously shown you some AC outlets already. This is another one. Um, so yeah, when we've got the AC on, when we're lucky enough to have the AC on, this is my position because I get blasted with cold air in my face, which is lovely. And underneath the sofas here are our batteries, our battery chargers and our inverter. So we are going to show that to you in a different episode. AV. Let's talk about our AV. Audio visuals? Yes. Okay, well this is Nick's specialty, so he might want to get in, the in front of the camera. No, However, no, I'll start. I'll no, start. I'm going to do it all because I've just I'll, got half naked. I'll start things off. This is our television. Now, do you need a television on a boat? A conversation we've been having for some time. We don't time. have a home, so yes, we do need a yeah, television. Yeah, we've, we've decided, yes, we do. So it does raise up. So there we've got TV. We've also got a seven, uh, seven channel amplifier for seven speakers. So there's one there. Point your finger there. Point your finger there. Four in the ceiling, a very large subwoofer down there. And then the final two are in the cockpit. And the head unit for that is, let me just bring the television down. And so the head unit for that is there. And yes, that is what, that is connected optically to the television as well. So that I believe is our saloon. We have lighting we've got some really nice lighting here yeah the lighting's beautiful the whole boat's beautiful and um just to finish up this episode because we're not going down into the holes in this episode that's going to be next episode but just to recap one thing that i love about this boat that was important to me and nick was the sense of this big open living space uh we are very pleased that that's worked out so well um, it just looks beautiful it is so practical because there is amazing ventilation and it just it has such a nice feel to it such a nice vibe as you can see you know I'm getting like the breeze in my hair right now it's just super super lovely and cooling and yeah we love the trifold door and we love the big windows and we just love the whole space so we're gonna leave you here. I'm sorry to keep you hanging because uh, this episode is just gonna get way too long if we try and do it all in one hit. Next week, we are going to go down into the hulls. We're gonna show you everything in the hulls, including Nick's workshop. I shouldn't say Nick's workshop, our workshop, I suppose. <laughs> sure. Which you guys haven't seen yet. We will also go through the engine bays. They're accessed through, uh, well, this one. No, they're both accessed actually um, from inside the hulls. So we're gonna go through the engine bays and we're also gonna go through all of our plant machinery. So that will be happening next week. I hope that you subscribe so that you can watch that episode and you are reminded to watch that episode if you click the little bell. Anyway, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next week. See ya.